Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran Kumar, founder and host of You're Not Invisible After 50. Despite the title, you don't have to be over 50 to listen to this podcast. No matter whether you're 25, 45 or 65, we can all learn lessons from each other to help us build a better, more fulfilled life. Come listen to the inspiring stories of all the phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. They are not invisible. I'm not invisible and neither are you. So no matter what society says, life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran and host of this podcast. We're all about showcasing phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. You'll get to hear all the inspiring stories why you don't have to be invisible after 50. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful life story from this week's guest. And I'm so excited about this. My guest today is Rohini Singh. Hi, Rohini. How are you? Hi, Kiran. Thank you so much for having me on your platform. It's been actually uh, so wonderful, Kiran, to uh, first of all, listen to all the phenomenal women that you have there on your podcast, all so unique, all so different. And I couldn't just help reflecting that, you know, all of us have a story. And the underpinnings of it all are that there seems to be a plan to it. That's what I reflected on when I heard all those women. And the other part was uh, just pausing and reflecting on my own life, which, I mean, you made me do because uh, we are all going through life, but uh, we don't always pause and look back and look at the whole of it. And um, it's been an amazing process. Oh, um, I can't thank you enough for saying those beautiful and wonderful words. They mean so much. I mean, when I started this, you know, you never know the direction, the travel, you know, the direction of travel. You just think, okay, I'm going to do this and I hope it catches on. And it has, it's caught on in terms of imagination and the want to be on here and the feedback that I'm getting. So I truly, truly welcome those words and I absorb them into my soul because this is what it's about, isn't it? It's about letting women speak for themselves and also to think about where they are and where they're going. So thank you, Rohini, for that. It's just so heartfelt. And thank you for coming on to the podcast, of course. So I'm now going to get you to introduce yourself to the listeners in one line of who you are. Gosh, first she asks me to look back at my whole life. Then she says, now introduce yourself in one line. Okay, oh. so... <laughs> so I'm Rohini Singh. I've written a couple of books, so I guess I could say I'm an author. Uh, I've also um, I'm a spiritual mentor now. Uh, it looks like life has guided me there, and I guess that's what I'm really going to speak to you about because uh, there've been so many chapters in life. Uh, it almost seems like different lifetimes. You know, when you look at all the different things you've done. Um, my father was in the army, so the earlier part of my life was moving from one cantonment to another, uh, an army kid, seeing all the, the little towns of India. Then it was because it was such a mobile kind of existence, I was sent off to a boarding school. So maybe like a boarding school experience. After which I went of all things to study international law in Czechoslovakia. So that seems like another totally different chapter too. And then I came back and, you know, life just has a plan. I mean, no matter what you will, no matter what you do, it just sort of gently nudges you in certain directions. So I came back. I like joined a corporate house. I was working. Marriage happened. And then my beautiful daughter came into my life. So motherhood happened. Parenting happened. So but while life was like sort of going on in this quite what you might say at one level at another level it was almost like the universe was waiting for when can we nudge her to what she's supposed to do Ooh. and uh, funny but like you know how the whole um, aspect of healing came into my life and that's really what I'll talk more about today because I feel that 
this life was really for for freedom for discovering myself uh, for becoming my own best self and how it happened is i think how it often happens for many which is that there's something which disrupts your life in a way and for me it happened because my father who was like quite the bedrock of our family uh, he had to have a knee surgery and the knee surgery went wrong and in that year in which he had almost 13 surgeries to like fix it you know it was like uh, there was turmoil in the house and suddenly somebody mentioned this modality called reiki to me and i said oh yeah the excuse became maybe i can heal my father mm-hmm. but you know what all the circumstances of our lives are really a setup so i started learning reiki and i thought to myself that why i'm doing it is because i'm going to heal him but it was actually my own starting of my own journey of growth i just love the fact that <clears throat> first of all the introduction is long the introduction which has been really good and i think you've also undersold yourself because written a couple of books come on rohini you have written for hay house i read your biography and so it's not like you are just written a couple of books you've written a low number of books which have sold exceptionally well so let's let's talk about that but it's a really lovely introduction in terms of you know your past and you write you know when you get to the age of um i'm nearly 60 and you realize that your life is in chapters and when you look back at your life um you could go oh that happened then but you're right the 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 what you are directed to what you're supposed to be doing like i'm being directed to what i'm doing now you know and we'll you know and i've got another podcast which is just started it that's about my story and, and the lessons i've learned but let's you've talked a little bit about about your past so let's carry on about that let's just carry on from the reiki bit and and trying to heal your father yeah so it was you know kiran it was like you know it's like almost like the universe is waiting for you to just nod yes and then it's like a whole different door opens mm-hmm. so after i learned reiki it was i mean i can't remember a modality i didn't learn and it was just like progressing on my own path of of inner growth and and i can remember at, i think it was around age 40 when i was teaching something and there was that aha moment when i just realized like wow you know i'm doing exactly what i was supposed to do i feel so fulfilled doing this and then when you reflect deeper on it you realize that you didn't will any of it you know healing just came into my life workshops came into my life so there was that period of like um, really exploring modalities learning them teaching them i was one of the first teachers of this modality which is very popular now emotional freedom techniques mm-hmm. so i began teaching that i've written a book about that too miracles with eft which is really all my experiences condensed into that book then i wrote another parable called free fall which was i mean i i wrote it in a very light hearted way it was well you know what i'm not going to write this book like you're supposed to write books you're supposed to be very disciplined you're supposed to write every day i told myself hey what you know what rohini you're going to really have fun with this when you really feel the urge to write then we are going to write and when you don't feel like we are just going to let it go and there were many days kiran when i felt like listen this is not how books get written but it just flowed like when i look at it now i think hey how come you wrote this like it just just feels channeled you didn't even know this so well then but i think that's how the universe has always reached out to me in fact i want to share something very personal with you it's uh, i was having lunch with a friend who was clairvoyant and i remember her looking at me and saying uh, i can see things around you i can see things about you do you want to know now catch anyone saying they don't want to know so i said mm-hmm. yes of course and i remember her saying uh, do you know what a rescue worker is and i said no not really what is it and she said well you know imagine somebody in an office who doesn't really have a designation but they're given things to do you know fix the the filing system today and fix the computers another day so she said 
you know what? For many lifetimes now, you have been a rescue worker. Wow. You've just gone a particular life and done the job that you were supposed to do and exited. Like you've had very short lives. And she looked at me and she said, and how old are you now? And I said, well, I'm 42. And she said, now your time for yourself begins. She said, maybe I'm having lunch with you today just to be able to tell you this. She said, now you've not had such a long life for a long time. And she said, somehow you're going to be freed of your responsibilities and be able to really devote yourself to your own inner journey, your own journey of growth, your own. And she said, you are here to help and serve. So she said, just do that. And I remember being very frightened when I heard it. You know, it was like, what's going to happen now? And I don't know these words. I don't understand these words. But exactly that is what happened. I mean, this, you know, I was learning these modalities. I was holding workshops, retreats were happening. Then the books happened. So the first book that I wrote was called The Only Way Out is Within. And it's got quite a touching uh, story behind it because I wrote an article in the newspaper called um, Don't Get Trapped by Your Emotions. Mm -hmm. And apparently it had a very overwhelming response. And I got a phone call from somebody, a young army officer, who was somewhere on some far off outpost. And he rang me and he said, I read your article, ma'am. It meant a lot to me. We hardly get newspapers here, but please, ma'am, write a book. And there was static on the line and the line got cut. Wow. And I just put, and I thought, write a book. I don't know what to write in a book. But that idea, that seed, and it had been sown in such a beautiful way. And then I spoke with my husband about it. And he said, uh, yeah, go meet a publisher. Meet a publisher, like, you know, show them this article. So I did that. And that's how I began writing The Only Way Out is Within. And it's interesting how the, how the universe puts you on a path that you hadn't even thought about. So exactly. it's an... And you know, that, that phone call that you received, that was a sign from the universe saying to you, that's your next step. And you're directed along that. And you may not have thought about it, but yeah. it's a direction that you've been told you should be going. Absolutely. And you know what, Kiran, this whole process of your asking me to look back at my life has been exactly that. Because now when you look back, you can connect the dots. Like the clairvoyant was somebody who was telling me something. That phone call was some, something who was telling me something. And then there was this period of quite, you know, a contentment. But there was a voice inside which said, is this what the spiritual path is all about? You're going to keep doing workshops. And, you know, after every workshop, like one feels, I would hear the words like, I feel so whole. I feel so complete. So I began questioning, like, where does this wholeness go? Like this completeness and wholeness go away that you need to come again to a workshop. And actually, I prayed for two years. I really didn't know who to ask. But I prayed and I said, and I do believe that we all have, you know, guides and people from the other beings from the other realms who are supporting us, protecting us, guiding us. So I just prayed and said, hey, listen, if this is the path and this is where I'm supposed to be right now, it's fine. But there's something which tells me there's something more. Is there something more? show me. And it was almost two years later that I was guided to another retreat in which actually, you know, it's like now when I look back, it's like as if the whole axis of life slowly turned. Mm -hmm. Because it was now the question was not what do I need to do? How do I need to do it? Why is this so? The questions didn't start with what and how and why. They started with who. Who wow. am I? Who mm -hmm. am I? I think you get to a point, if you're a spiritual being, which I am as well, you feel that you just know and you feel what the universe is trying to tell you. And then you do, you just actually then perform that. You're the, you're the actor in all of that. The direction, this is coming in my head now, the direction comes from your spirit and soul. And then that's what you act out. So we are just actors in in what we're being directed to do to be doing. And I think that I can I can that totally resonates with me because my whole business 
is built on this in my own intuition that I feel and then I do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Kiran, I really believe that there is, I mean, I believe that there's a soul plan. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have sanctioned it. I believe that there is a GPS and the G in that GPS stands for God. You know? mm -hmm. And it's, so it's as we are going across, you know, as we are like journeying through life. I mean, that GPS is always there because we already filled in the destination. The GPS knows. So sometimes, you know, when you reroute or you go off into like a different pathway, after a while, it will guide you back again to where you're supposed to come back to. So I feel that guidance. I feel that guidance. I know that it's there. And I know, and I think that is really the beauty of being this age mm. is that you can see those dots. You can connect those dots. You can begin to relax because there has been enough times in life that you have been taught that, hey, listen, there's a plan. You relax. Surrender a bit. Surrender and let something higher than your will take you. I just love the fact that you, you're selling uh, and you're promoting um, the fact that we're over 50 and what that this brings. It does bring you the joy. It does bring you the freedom. It does bring you the wisdom. It does bring you the love. You know, those are really powerful, powerful words. So thank you for your wisdom. And I'm so glad that you and I met um, and doing this podcast. So tell me about your present. I mean, what what what's going on now in terms of there's a picture behind you. So what is that about? Uh, the picture is actually the new, uh, the latest uh, cover of my book. The book is actually been quite a bestseller. It's uh, uh, it's called the only way out is within, and uh, it's funny. I you know I I mean I gave it this title very many years ago, but. Uh, this really is the whole, let's say, uh, significance of my life. Mm -hmm. The whole of it in this sentence. Because this is what I really believe. This is my credo. This is what I do to help people. And that's what my present is all about, whether it's through art. So I've recently certified in something new called Neurographica, which is a way of getting through communicating with your subconscious mind and changing patterns and behaviors. So um, I don't know, it's a very open phase, Kiran. It's a very mm -hmm. open phase. Like my own spiritual path is like very strong and steady, but the rest of it is whatever I can do to, to serve, to reach out, to help other people be empowered is what I would like to do. The other, the title of my other book is Free Fall. And I remember when I gave the title to the publisher, they said, Sorry, none of us can understand what this means. Mm -hmm. And I said, actually, even I'm not sure. <laughs> but this title, this title just, uh, you know, means a lot. Um, it feels like the right, and it was a completely intuitive decision. And again, it felt like guidance. It was, what does free fall mean? And as I grew, actually, even after writing the book, I realized that what free fall means is surrender, mm -hmm. sweetheart, relax. There's a plan. There's a safety net. Be, be courageous enough to just free fall. And actually free fall doesn't mean falling downwards. One realizes as one goes along that it means flying. It yeah. means being free. It means just letting go. Sometimes letting go of even your own plan so that a higher plan can come into place. And that's really my deepest belief. I see it now. Mm -hmm. I see that everything in my life has led up to this moment, exactly as it was meant to be. I think that's really true because I think for me, free fall is about just letting go of constraints and uh, and the chains. I mean, I talk about it a lot in my own life because when you just let go, yes, it's scary, but sometimes you just have to believe you've got to have the faith because you have no idea where you're going to land. And yeah. if you have the faith, it's all okay to let go and go through that free fall. And have that, as you said, Rohini, to have that surrender, to, to just let go for once and go, let's see what this is going to be. And I tell you something, in my own life, I let go of a marriage and I'm a much happier person seven years on, right? 
And it was a difficult step to take, especially, you know, in our culture, right? And it was the best thing that I did for myself and for my children. And But look where I am now. You know, it's just a different, it's a different game. And as you said, you're directed to that. I mean, whereas I wasn't allowed to speak in my past, all I do is speak in my in my future, right? Yeah, and you know, that's what one realizes as one goes along, that those things that one considered to be obstacles, like this, for example, I was never allowed to speak. This exactly is what pushes you to rebirth yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it is exactly, I mean, you need some, um, let's say, challenge or adversity or something sometimes, because otherwise you're like traipsing along on your path. And it's like fine. And it's like, you may think you may know you're unhappy or you may think you're very happy. But a um, little bit of trouble. And at least for me, it has, it has become so very clear that the only way out really is to go within. Mm -hmm. Not go out to fix the situation. Not go out to change the circumstance. Not hope that somebody in your life will begin treating you better but find that sacred secret space within which is always there yeah, it is absolutely. peace there is love it is joyous find that place and mm -hmm. once you find that place then come to life from that place mm -hmm. and once you do really nothing can trouble you things will happen life happens but you stay centered in that non-happening place I That's just really love I just love the words that you just use. Life comes from that place because then, as I as you said those words, my eyes were directed to the lotus flower behind you, and it is about you blooming and flourishing and growing from that space. Because if you have that love, life form from there, from a really honest place, you can then become the best person that you can become because you've been directed from that point yeah and it's surprising you know like lots of people like speak to me about you know relationships or the angst in relationships or even that they feel unheard you know as you said but um if you really want to be heard you have to come from a very quiet place mm -hmm. you can speak words but uh, it's not a loud tone that will help you it's not aggressive attitude that will help you. Absolutely. And that's what I really, really, really um, would love to tell uh, the younger generation. Uh, find this place. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. I just love what you're saying. Just absolutely love it. So what does the future look like? In t I mean, I could talk to you for hours now. I say that to all my guests, and I could actually. But what does the future look like in terms of... The future? The future looks uh, like I feel very open to not planning it, mm -hmm. to not strategizing, because I really feel like uh, I'm in a space of wonder mm -hmm. and I'm in a space of complete trust. It's like whatever I am meant to do, as it has always been, whether it was being guided to learn a particular modality or it was being taken away from modalities or it was learning some other, it's all been a guided process. And that's what's going to happen in the future too. I look forward to really fulfilling that so-called soul purpose. And I may know it and I may not fully know it. Mm -hmm. But if it happens for me, I believe that it is the purpose. Absolutely. Yeah, I can just understand that. Like, like my morning prayer is, uh, God, make me an instrument of thy will. That's really clearly it. And that's what I think will manifest in the future. Like may whatever I do be guided by a divine voice, a divine purpose. Uh, may I continue to grow in my own spiritual path. And may my presence heal. That's what really would be my wish for myself. I think yeah. that's, per that's perfect. Because I, I think you're right. Because, you know, you th these aren't the times to strategize. If, especially if you're of a... Uh, a spiritual you know you're a spiritual being that you just need to let I, I mean you have to let go right you, that free fall you have to trust you have to know that the path that you're going to be traveling is a path that you are destined to be on and I'm of the same mindset because I just feel something and I go that's what I'm going to do 
I mean, let me just tell you about You're Not Invisible After 50. I trademarked it the day it popped into my head because I knew. And that was what I was meant to do. And as you know, we're three seasons in and, you know, we're doing exceptionally well. But it was what I knew at that point it was like, that is my purpose in life. Um, and you just feel it. You just know it. And you think that's and if you trust it, that's where you should be going. It's really true, you know, there's a and there's a quote which says you're not a human being having a spiritual experience. You're a spiritual being having a human experience. Mm. Mm. So it's like nice. the other way. Around. And that Absolutely. actually is when you when you come onto that path and you begin to realize that, then everything changes. Yeah. Yeah. Quite honestly, I feel like even more than that, I feel that you know, even when you have an urge to do something. Even that is planted. Mm. It's like, you know, we think that, yeah, this is me thinking through things. But you didn't think this thing 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have been confused about certain things at a certain point. But one day you have clarity. Mm -hmm. One day you know that, okay, this is where I have to go. And this is something I have really begun to trust. Yeah. This is something where I'm like willing to wait and not always listen to my mind, which may be dumb and saying get on with it why aren't you doing something so I think I'm really shifting personally from doing to being mm -hmm. and from that being space which is a very quiet space actions are flowing mm -hmm. between doing and being they're not an antithesis of each other but it's like are you doing from an egoic space and uh, you know striving stressing all of that or are you doing from a very quiet space and you can actually do much more so like mm -hmm. trusting that, you know, whether you call it gut instinct or you call it intuition. Intuition is such a beautiful word. Mm -hmm. Intuition. Intuition from within. Mm -hmm. It's like listening to that voice. And that voice is a divine voice. Absolutely. And intuition is teaching yeah. you from within, isn't it? It's, that's what it's about. It's teaching you from yeah. within how you should be directing your life, right? Absolutely. Powerful. Absolutely. So let's move on to the bonus part of the podcast um I'm, I'm so sad that we got to this part but it's also very helpful the sad bit is is that we have to come almost to the end of the podcast but the good thing is you're going to give you these valuable tips to the audience so yeah the five tips that you would give to anyone who's under 50 under 50 okay so you know Kiran, we did like a very interesting ex uh, experiment in those pandemic days where um, we wrote a letter talking to our younger selves mm -hmm. so this is something like that so if I was to tell the younger ones I would say first of all recognize this that the only way out is within mm -hmm. so therefore what does this mean this means be empowered empower yourselves uh, recognize don't be a victim come out of victimhood and come into the tunnel of light. And you will only find that by like not focusing outwards always, but beginning to also focus inwards. So whatever may be your journey, you make your prescription or you don't even make it be open to the universe guiding you, it will. So that would be one thing I would love to say. The second thing I would say to a younger person, especially in today's age is cultivate patience. Like everything happens in its own time. It has its own rhythm. You may plant a plant, but it is not going to sprout until its time is right. You may water it. You may nurture it. Do that with love, but allow things their own time to unfold. So that's like another thing that I would love to say. And it's quite interesting because I just read this week. You can't, yeah. when you sow a seed, you can't eat the fruit on the same day, right? And that's the same thing. Because it's about having the patience, and I and I must admit, Rohini, I'm very impatient as by de by default, and I just need to. I've learnt now that I've had to sit back and be quiet at times. I find it very difficult, I'll be honest. But you do have to have patience for something to flourish and grow, and it it's really hard, good. even no matter how hard it is. <laughs> yeah, it's something you have to cultivate, you know, and you have to cultivate it from a deeper sense of knowing that everything sprouts at the right time. There is a divine timing, actually. You know, it's just like a, a bud 
sitting in the ground doesn't want to like open up before its time or a caterpillar which is in its cocoon will burst out and become a butterfly only when its time is right so i would say like to remember this like be patient cultivate patience and another thing that i would say is be in gratitude i really 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 emphasize very strongly you know even doing a practice which i'm doing presently with a group in fact and i invite all your listeners actually to join us if there's anybody who should write to you and say you know yeah i want to join that that gratitude group that rohini spoke about you would be very happy to have them so we write gratitude every day and we started with 5 and 10 and we moved on to 150 and 200 it changes the quality of your life mm. Mm. because you are looking not at what you don't have but what you have absolutely i mean i do this all the time i mean even I, i don't know where it came from but i do like posts at the end of the week for what i've achieved what i've got what i've learnings i've had you know when we sit at the table we are thankful for what we've got in our you know in front of us you know it's it is so important to be grateful for what you do have and not and and not worry about what you don't have yeah there's a very beautiful quote i mean i'm not very good with quotations and being very accurate but i can tell you the essence of it um uh, it's not happiness that makes you uh, grateful it's gratitude that makes you happy mm. so it's really like that and when you begin to focus and this is almost going into like you know the the art and the science this is the science of it the more you focus on what you have the more you have in your life mm. and that would be the fourth thing actually that i would offer as just like a little piece of learning which would be that um, life echoes your inside life is a mirror to you so if you are cultivating that inner peace that gratitude that joyfulness it manifests physically i promise you it manifests physically so don't work only strive on the outer things fix the inner and you will see the reflection of it in your outer so this is something i would like to offer and maybe the last one would be my favorite quotation it's a quotation by hafiz and it says this place where you are right now god marked on a map for you oh wow 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 powerful this Lovely. place where you are this place where you are right now god marked on a map for you you only realize it as you grow up in years you know and all of us like i mean i've listened to all the women on your podcast as well as friends around me we've all had tough times yeah. we've all had challenges we've all had ups and downs but really that is what has defined the diamond you know the Absolutely. coal has become a diamond because of that friction the conflicts the challenges the the polishing and wow. it's just an amazing time to amazing time to acknowledge it and to savor it oh beautiful. beautiful it is beautiful three tips to anyone who's over 50 what would you say to them uh three tips to hey guys you're like the lucky blessed few right so my first tip to them would still be be in gratitude mm. and so much to be grateful for like look back at your life be in gratitude acknowledge it uh look back take those pearls of wisdom from it share them i would also say uh, fulfill your bucket list if you have a bucket list go for it guys go for it like tick things off uh enjoy the comfort enjoy the joy enjoy the freedom enjoy your grandkids enjoy your your kids like express love and and wear flowers in your head <laughs> because you uh, the 50s and beyond have their own flavor they have their own essence they have things that happen for you which cannot happen before 50 you know i love happen. i love rahini the flavor essence i think that those are just magical words they're the things that should give meaning to everyone who's over 50 because you're right you know the flavor what you experience at 50 plus is this freedom this yeah. this kind of opening in terms of 
your mind you know we're constrained when we're younger we have all these preconceptions we're pre you know all of these things that kind of guide well push us in one direction but when you get to the age of 50 plus you can almost do what you want as long as you don't hurt anybody but as long you can have the freedom to speak openly without being judged you're not bothered about any of that and I think that brings such as you said flavor essence um you know freedom joy joy and happiness it's a vantage point you are looking from a vantage point you have climb the mountain and can look down on various things, share that wisdom. I mean, we are all, you know, it's the talents that we are given are like, you could say like, it's God's gift to us, but expressing it and bringing it out into the world is our gift back. I'm not even going to add anything to that because I think that's just a beautiful way to finish the podcast, which I always say to the women, because they always give me a nugget, nugget of wisdom at the end. So Rahini, it's been an honor it's been a beautiful conversation and and beautiful learning. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much for this. Thank you so much again for inviting me. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And thank you for all the patience that you've actually showed with me because both of us know how much patience you had to have to get us together. <laughs> thank, thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Love you, children. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you too. I love you too. Thank you for listening to the You Are Not Invisible After 50 podcast. If you want to hear more from some amazing women who are over 50, who are kicking ass and making an impact, then don't forget to follow us right here on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember to subscribe, rate, comment and share with other women through your social media. Let's spread the word across the world that you don't have to be invisible after 50. Check out our other services on www.you'renotinvisibleafter50.com and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. And always remember that life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. But wait, we have even more to offer. Join us and tune in to our other podcast, Shamelessly Untamed, a transformative series that encourages you to embrace your true self and celebrate your uniqueness. Make sure to subscribe to Shamelessly Untamed podcast on other podcasts or Spotify. Don't forget to rate, comment and share with anyone who can benefit from its content. Explore our additional services at www.roaringahead.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. We look forward to you connecting with us. Thank you.